Hey, are you currently thinking about becoming a full stack developer but you have no clue where to start and you are often struggling with overwhelming materials and information on the internet? In today's video, we are going to actually talk about how to become a full stack developer with really, really practical steps. Everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Vicky. You can also call me Victoria. If you are interested in web development or if you try to get into coding or currently learning how to code, this might be the perfect channel for you. So the first thing that you might wonder is, is it possible to be a full stack developer? So I think that in coding, you can't really be an expert at everything. It's kind of like a T shape, which means that you would have a general understanding of the basics and then you go deeper into one or two particular thing, expanding your knowledge. So before we dive into the topic of how to become a full stack developer, the first thing that you have to understand is what is front end and what is back end and what is full stack. So let's think about an example as a restaurant. Front end, it's more like a menu at the restaurant. It's presenting to the user in a very visual way so you can know what kind of dishes that the restaurant is offering. When it comes to back end, it's more like the kitchen. So there's this concept about database, which is kind of like the ingredients of the dishes that the restaurant has. So all of these ingredients are going to be storing in the fridge or somewhere in the restaurant. And so that is the idea of database. So once we understand that, now let's actually dive into how step by step that you can become a full stack developer. So in total, there's gonna be five steps that you have to follow and this should be in an order. So step number one is you need to understand the basics of front end. You don't have to be an expert, but you definitely need to know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript and plus a front-end framework, for instance, like React or Vue or Angular. Here is a video that I created that actually helped you to become a front-end developer, and I dive a lot deeper into the actual practical steps of how you can achieve that. So make sure that you check out that video if you are currently at step number one. Step number two is now you have to move to the back end. So what I would recommend, there's a few that are very popular as back end languages out there, such as JavaScript, which you also might heard that a lot about people referring JavaScript as Node.js, which is specifically talking about back end as JavaScript. The next language that you might consider is Java, Python, or even Ruby. Now, Ruby is less popular, but it's definitely very easy to learn. If you're thinking about just grabbing a backend language for you to learn to become a more rounded full stack developer, learning either Ruby or Python is a great start. Now, if you're confusing about whether or not you should be learning Java or Python and what are the pros and cons about that, go ahead and check out another video over here that I created that comparing Java with Python or even Python with JavaScript if you're interested in that. So step number three, after you learn about the front end, the back end, one thing that I wanted to point out and it's super important that you have to square away is the general knowledge as a developer. So what that means is that you would be interacting with the terminal a lot and you would be using Git version control system a lot. So definitely make sure that you understand what is Git version control system and how do you use that to interact on GitHub. This applies to every single developer, no matter if you're front end, back end, or full stack. I wanted to take a quick note to beginners. Don't feel overwhelmed with all these informations that you need to learn. It's all about consistency and it's all about learning little by little every day. Okay, so now you probably know front end and you learned back end. So the fourth step is to actually learn about database. So now remember that restaurant examples that I talked about in the beginning of the video. The next thing that you would need to learn is how do people organizing all these ingredients in the kitchen of a restaurant? The database, there's two types of database that exists or people often talked about when they talk about web development. 
either is sequel, which is a structured query language, or NoSQL, which is a not structured query language. Eventually, you're going to learn either SQL or NoSQL. You're going to work with both of them in your career. But when you're just currently learning, the first step that you need to know is just pick one. And what I would recommend is actually learning SQL. If you are thinking about becoming a backend developer or even a full stack developer, learning SQL can really help you to broaden out your opportunities as a backend developer. Let's go back to the restaurant example. So think about how the waiter is communicate with the customer who comes into the restaurant and send it back to the kitchen and let the chef know and the chef grabs the ingredient and start making the dishes. Waiter or waitresses is back and forth communicating between these two parties. When people are referring to, oh, I'm working with the API, is really referring to the focusing working on the communications between the front end and the back end. You often hear the concept of REST API, and I also really want you to really understand the MVC model. So MVC model stands for Model View Controller, and you really gotta understand the responsibility of these three different models. You might also heard the word GraphQL and GraphQL is a relatively new concept and it's a great alternative to supplement for REST API. But in my opinion, it's still really important to learn REST API to learn the basic concepts. Step number five is authentications. So when we talk about being a full stack web developer and when we're talking about full stack, it's oftentimes thinking about web securities and authentications. And when you're building a web application, you often have a username and a password and you're trying to log in before you even using the applications. I would say that definitely learn about the general concepts about token authentication and also oftentimes people use JWT. Knowing some of these concepts and actually using them in your personal project can really, really help you to stand out. And especially it's a really common thing now Nowadays, that everybody has some sort of like login authentication that are on web. But you have learned so many things, right? Like, wow, that is crazy. And it's important to learn these concepts, and also it's really important to think about your personal projects and trying to find out a way that you can build a full stack application on your resume. In order to find a job as a developer, you need to have a lot of personal projects. On top of that, you also want to make sure that you're contributing to open source, you are giving back to the community. And the next thing probably that I want you to really think about and take this to the next level is then thinking about building for scalability, like the general topics that how to build products that's sustainable and the idea of if this product ever grows bigger and serving a lot of users, how do I optimizing the product to make it better, make it faster, make it sexier? First step that you would need to do is learning front end. And in order to learn front end, I would highly recommend to check out this video over here called how to become a web developer in 2021. Some Udemy courses that I recommend over here that can guide you through some of the concepts that I talk about in this video and actually giving you some good suggestions and learning materials that you can learn about that. Follow my guy and you will soon become a full stack developer. I really hope this video is helpful. Happy learning. Peace.